Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, welcome to Beyond the Title. Um, this is one of Insider's um, favourite things that we've got going on at the moment. We take wonderful people that we know from within the industry that are doing amazing work, fantastic, smashing their careers, generally being brilliant people. And we're not going to ask them about their careers at all because that would be far too simple. What we really want to do is we want to know who they are as people. So we're digging in, asking them a few um, silly questions, a few thought-provoking questions, and just trying to find out who they are and what makes them tick. Um, today, I am very lucky uh, to have Jackie Barnett, the CRM manager for M&M Direct, um, and she's going to. I'm going to interrogate her, and hopefully, we're going to have a really good time. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> hi, hi, Kate. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. <laughs> um, so welcome to be on the title. It's really exciting to have you here. Just another uh, bit of background about Jackie. She uh, she led a, an amazing panel at Uplift Virtual Summit um, just a few weeks ago, and it was one of my it was really one of my highlights of, of the summit. Thanks so much for for speaking, Jackie. No problem. No, it was great. It was great to be a part of. It was a really great summit. I really enjoyed it. There were some really um, some brilliant speakers and some some great sort of insight that um, sort of came came from it. So it was really it was great. It was real. Amazing. Um, so now I'm going to ask you about you rather than about uh, retention. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know what, do you know what, there are some of these, some of the questions that I just thought, well, I know that I'm going to be answered a few, and I was thinking, think, talking about yourself is like really weird and awkward. <laughs> like, I know, but that's, that's why we want to push people to do it, because especially, in, in, it varies in, in different cultures, but um, we're, we're both British, and that kind of self-promotion is, is something that we get a bit awkward about. Um, you do a bit but, of self-analysis, and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. Well, everyone else is going to love you. Um, so, first question. What is your ikigai? And for the uninitiated, ikigai is a Japanese phrase which means your reason to jump out of bed in the morning or your reason for being. So, you know what? It's quite funny because when I looked at the meaning of that, I just thought, mm, why don't I jump out of bed? And then I thought, it's not only that, it's not because I'm dragged out of bed by one of my children. <laughs> <laughs> I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old and it is very rare that I am jumping out of bed before they are getting me out of bed so <laughs> so I guess um I think though to be honest they are one of the reasons why I get out of bed every day um I'm really they're, they're like you know I have a great family and um it's all very busy uh, in this household and um, I suppose getting up and getting them sorted every day and they're just generally great kids like I'm really lucky and I suppose you know my work as well like I have some you know, I think the last maybe four or five months I think have highlighted for me and probably loads of people out there the importance of the things that you have in your life and um totally. I think you, I think everyone should will hopefully have a renewed sort of appreciation for, you know, the things that they have got in their lives. You know, they might have lost, they, you know, lost jobs and stuff like that. And I think yeah. hopefully the, there's that focus on the good things that are going on in life at the moment. And I think for me, especially at the moment, it's sort of just been so grateful that, you know, I have a roof over my head and wonderful husband, kids, great job. And I think that sort of at the moment is what's getting me up each day. There have been some tough days, like every single person out there, you know, regardless of, you know, what circumstance or situation you're in, it's been, Absolutely. it's been tough. Like, and there have been days where I've thought, no, nah, do you know, I'd rather stay in bed. I'd rather just chill <laughs> <all day." laughs> in my PJs. But, you know, I think, um, I think, yeah, this ha if you could look for any silver lining recently, I think it has been the fact that, you know, I felt lucky that I, you know, got up and had the kids and my family around me and mm. sort of log, you know, weird situation of going to work, which is walking into my office and like sitting <laughs> on the laptop. But um, it's been great as well, you know, having that extra time at home. Like, like I don't have to commute or anything at Amazing. the moment so much. And so, yeah, I suppose that's probably the key thing for me that's been getting me up every day just you know the fact that I'm just really lucky to sort of have the things I have it's it's, it's so brilliant um I think especially with your two little ones um it's it's so it's so easy to get wrapped up in in you in yourself 
Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and in in this day and age, I think it, it. it is a it's a bit of a problem so having those those other lives those people that do depend on you those really tiny really cute people that depend on you whether that's I'm for <laughs> whether that's for mum look at this or mum i'm hungry yeah. <laughs> yeah it's i think that's it i think um yeah it's you i think when sometimes it's very very easy to get wrapped up in work work is we're always busy everyone's busy 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 it's you know i think us as human beings we get so sucked into you know the daily grind of going to work and you know working long days and stuff and I feel like if there was anything if there's something that's come out this lockdown it's sort of you know we've had so much more time at home and as a family and sharing sort of more time together as a family it's sort of made a huge difference I think and it's definitely something that we've both me and my husband have said like this we want to continue this regardless to what things are going to look like next year or whatever I think, you know, and it's been tricky because you're working from home. You don't have that drive in between to sort of separate work Church from home. Yeah. So it's been it's been a learning curve. But yeah, no, it's been I think it's it's been great, really, from that point of view. That's brilliant. I'm really glad to hear that. <laughs> now, which movie character best represents you and why? I literally I I had a I had a long hard think about this because you know, I've got, I was thinking, what what sort of, what sort of character should I go for? And I was thinking, you've got all the obvious ones. Obviously, we watched a lot of Disney in this house. I was like, should I go for a Disney princess? And I was a bit like, mm, no. And then I thought of a film, which I saw, it's quite, it's a relatively old film. I don't know if you see it. It's, well, you might, it's, it's a Julia Roberts film and it's called Erin Brockovich. Yeah. It's right. based so, on a true story, isn't it? It is. And you know what? I just lo- I loved I love I love the story I, I love Julie Roberts anyway and I love the actress I, lo- I just love the whole thing about I think the whole moral of the the film itself and you know is just it really hits home for me you know the fact that you can literally be anyone it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter what qualifications you've got it, it doesn't matter you can literally do anything if you work hard and you sort of have that tenacity to sort of get get you know if you believe in something you can do it you can achieve it and I love that so much and I think it's something that you know was instilled in me by sort of my my parents my dad and I think it's something that Ireland's you know that I instill in my children as well and I think just yeah I just love I think that unassuming you know don't write someone up just because you know they aren't the ideal you know in your eyes from like haven't got the right degree or haven't got you know the right qualifications this it's these days it's so much more than that like I you know I always say you know to my brothers and that and I've got younger brothers who are mm. sort of you know, looking at what they're going to do next with union stuff like that and I've got two brothers they're two very very different characters one's very very academic the other sort of is more he's not he's not he's more sort of He's got a great character. He's more driven as a person with his sports and stuff like that. And wow. I, I think to both of them, like, you know, going to university, amazing. It's just, you know, it can open up so many doors, but it's not the be all and end all either. And um, yeah. there are so many ways to make, make your way in this world. If you've got the right attitude, you know, I think then, you know, that's, that's how you're going to succeed in life. And I think, you know, I didn't go to uni and I just think, you know, it's not, it's not the, the the it's not everything i think you just have to have the right attitude um and i think companies are coming around to that now like you know because i think before it's quite difficult to get your foot in the door if you didn't have a degree or something like that yeah um and i think now a lot of businesses are sort of far more savvy and sort of thinking more about when they're interviewing someone what what the person's actually like because you know, you can you can train anything to anyone um but you can't can't try and drive no, you can't. You absolutely can't. You really can't. Someone has to want something. And I think, you know, that's, um, yeah, so that's, I've gone off on a total challenge, but that is why that's I love brilliant. the film because she is, she's like a, you know, she's a single mum, unemployed. She trains up to be a legal assistant. And then, you know, she takes on this huge business and then sort of brings them down. And I think, I think it's just great. It's a great story. And if you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. <laughs> I, I, I second that. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I also so agree with you about the university thing. I think, um, well, I think without getting too boring about about British politics, it was middle of the nineties, wasn't it, where there was a real push for everyone to go to university. But would the the world would be well, 
the world was so boring. It, the world will never be this boring because you can't like not everyone's the same, and you can't put everyone in the same box. Um, and I, I do hope that that we are pulling away from that so that people can be individuals um, and strive and just find different ways to make it in the world because it'd be worrying if we were all the same we're not all the same we that's don't it. all need the same things we're not going to achieve the same things that's it i think you know there's you know and i think as well there's enough pressure in the world for kids and teens these days as well totally. and i feel like you know those pressures of you know you know feeling that they should they're failure if they don't go to university or anything you know and i just think you know it would it would not I think I feel like sometimes it could knock so much confidence out of so many young people you know if they're yeah. passionate about something they should just go for it and I just yeah it's, it's something for me that I think is so important as you know when you're growing up to sort of understand that that you you know if you if you put your mind to it you will sort of make it in what you want to do you just you know it might be it might take you a little bit longer maybe to you know to get there but you get there anyway so yeah yes that's why that's why i'll get off my soapbox now but <laughs> it's brilliant thank you so when you've been well, while you've been working from home what has been the app that you can't live without so I like I'm not a massive technophobe. I'm really not. And I was like, I'm not gonna say something like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or anything like that. <laughs> You're not gonna do the dances. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I still got a really funny story about it. I'm not gonna tell it my husband kill me. But like um I'll ask you off camera. I think yeah, yeah. Um I think to be honest, the one app that I've been using lots recently um is Gusto, right? Oh, the food, the food one. app. Oh my god! Right, it's so big for it for, for me. We are like you know, me and my husband. We're both working, both working for home. We've been juggling the kids. You know, there were points during lockdown when obviously, you know, um, my daughter wasn't in school, my son wasn't in nursery. We were like, what? Well, it was mad. We were both trying to work, homeschool, look after you know, two year olds, do three, do three different jobs at the same time, basically. You know, just you know, loads of stuff going on throwing food into the mix and what we're going to eat as well was actually <laughs> like, you know what I was like there's only so long we can survive off beige food of chicken nuggets and chips <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness I loved the I love the app because it is so easy to it makes it so convenient the app's really easy to use I select my meals great um it's then ordered, it's then delivered the next week. Great, I don't have to make as many supermarket trips or anything like that, which is also great because, you know, when Especially you- from a safety point of view. Exactly. Um, and you know what, the quality of the food is really, really good. Um, oh, we're also quite creatures of habits in this. Me and my husband, we're terrible. You know, like you we, you get into like a rota of food that you're going to yeah. have. What, oh, chili. Sunday night stir fry. Stir fry. Chili. Yeah, you know, there, there are staples, you know, it's almost like what you've been eating sort of, as a kid and you just roll over a cottage pie and so mm. but what's been great is we've been trying like new foods every single week which is great because my husband is terrible if I was to be like oh mm. we're gonna have I don't know like a fish curry he'd be like nope <laughs> <laughs> but actually like we've been trying loads of stuff he's like this is actually really good um and surprise, I think surprise yeah, exactly. There's a whole world out there of delicious yeah, food that's now like, on your doorstep. Loads of different foods, loads of different cuisines. You wouldn't believe it. A <laughs> world outside of curry. Um, <laughs> but I think what I love most about Gusto is sort of what they're trying to achieve. So, you know, it's all about limiting the amount of food waste. I right. think like we as as human beings, we go to the supermarket and we're like, if it well, there are some people who are incredibly organized, but I am not organized from that point of view. And I'll go to a supermarket and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll have that. Oh yeah, I'll have that. Oh, I'll throw that in. Ooh, yeah, I'll that. And then I come home and then by the end of the week, there's loads of stuff that's gone out of day or sort of I've had yeah. a new veg that's gone to waste. And sort of it then gets all chucked away at the end of the week. And that's bad <laughs> because yeah. it, I'm, I, I was part of the problem I think I was reading up and there's so 15 million tons in the UK alone of food waste I can't even uh, find that quantity. Bread, milk, lo like you know so so poor it's just like it awful and um you know the business is trying to basically um reduce the amount of food waste and become you know and they they 
with all the food that they put into their boxes, it's all sort of sustainably sourced. So they're trying to keep to UK um, to sort of reduce sort of that impact on the environment, which I love. And um, I just like the whole ethos, like everything comes in recyclable packaging, you know, bar a few bits and pieces, which sort of they're working on. But I just love it. I just feel like as a, as a sort of a service, you know, for me, it ticks all the boxes. It's easy. It's quick. You know, it's 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 sort of simple to use. And then you've got everything. The reasoning behind it makes you feel good because you're doing something. I think. Awesome. You know, we all talk about it, but doing something good for the environment is, you know, where what everyone needs to be doing. I think. So yeah, it's it's sort of, sort of something that we've been using now for four or five months, and it's great really good Brilliant. and it is still cooking too it's not a sort of deliver yeah. deliver ready meal to you or deliver takeaway you can see the ingredients you know exactly what's going into you know exactly what foods you're feeding your children and feeding your whole family and you still get to be engaged with the food but just with all like with all the convenience of a delivery yeah. service yeah that's it it's um yeah and i at the end of the week it's so good to not have to be sort of chucking stuff away or anything like that i've literally i'm we're lit as a family we're using what we've got which is um and i think you know something that we've all probably all had to do during not done anyway we've all had to be pretty inventive when the heights of lockdown oh, yeah. <laughs> what can i make out of spaghetti um lentils yeah, prunes that have been in a can for like two years in the back of the cupboard but yeah so um that's kind of what I've been using it's been my saving grace really for the last sort of four or five months now brilliant now it's a quite a deep one what advice would you give to your 21 year old self what, what advice would I give have more confidence I think for me um you know I think when you're young you know that you you don't know tr- you know a little bit about yourself but I think it's a real journey you you know there's a lot going on in the world a lot of you know and I think you what I would say to myself is have more confidence in yourself like don't don't worry about getting something wrong don't don't you know it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to fail because you just learn from them um you know, throw your hat in the ring more, but just, you know, put yourself out there. I think that's what I'd say, you know, try, try not to be everyone's friend as well. Like, I think try not to be a people pleaser too often because... Really good advice. I think I think people, um, especially in the working environment, when you try to be a people pleaser all the time, you know, you can't, you can't be liked by everyone. It's just, you know, there are going to be people, unfortunately, out there who don't like you. That's just the way it is. You just have to get on with it, you know, and let that's that's OK. Like, and you that's know. their problem, not your problem. You can still carry on being and, and, you know, and I think it's not get don't get too hung up on that. And I think, you know, the pressure, you know, uh, all of it. I think to myself, I say all the time to my husband, like, oh, my daughter growing up and you know, when I was sort of a little bit young, you know, social wasn't a massive thing when I was a teen. No. When I was growing up. It was there, but it was, you know, it was like MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> with your, with your top eight friends being the most important thing, and you could, uh, you could drop one and replace one. It was a, cut, it was a cutthroat world, well, but nothing compared to the cutthroat world. Selfie, it was all like, yeah, that's it. So the, 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 the bang, yeah, that one. Over, that's yeah, it. That. It was all about that. <laughs> <laughs> There wasn't, you know, there wasn't all of those um, additional pressures that, they, you know, kids, they they come, you know, they go in school and there's, oh, you know what it's like in school, like, you know, you get bullies and you get all this, that and the other and they go home and then they see more of it at home and it's hard. But I think, yeah, to my 21 year old self, I'd be, I'd, I think I would, I'd just tell myself to just be confident in who you are and don't, don't worry so much about what people think of you and, sort of um yeah just put yourself out there and sort of yeah I think that would be sort of the key the key advice that I would sort of give and we'll give to my daughter and my son as well so I was going to say I think, I think that's good advice for for an awful lot of people and not just it when they're young um I think that that's <laughs> advice to live by yeah like you know I think yeah that's it I think if more people live like that it would be what well, would be a better place agreed <laughs> Jackie, what's the harshest feedback you've ever received? 
harshest feedback. Oh, that is an interesting one. Um, not knowing when to shut up. <laughs> Do you know, it's quite funny. So I met my husband through work. Um, mm. I used to work at events. And uh, uh, I, I suppose, I'm not sure if you've got the vibe, but I'm quite a um, loud person. <laughs> I thought you were quite shy and retiring, personally. <laughs> um, yeah, real um, I, um, I guess, yeah, I think so, <laughs> my husband, I remember him being like, do you know what, you are... I talk to him at work like you do all the time with sort of, you know, your husband and partner or whatever, close friends, mm-hmm. um, about situations that I'm in at work and how I'm going to handle a situation. My husband would be like, mm. I think sometimes you just need to um, maybe not talk so much. Keep it to yourself. Um, you're quite loud. You're quite dominating in a conversation sometimes. And I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think you know. I think as far as advice goes, like it's not it's not harsh. I get it. Like I, I am very loud and noisy, but it's something that I do try really hard. Like there are sometimes I just need to recognise, you know, feel the room. Like just you know, pick up on the vibes of the room. Sure. <laughs> Perhaps you know, not be so loud, and you know, but. I agree. Um, <laughs> okay so far i mean there's me like don't worry about who doesn't like you there's a reason jackie won't <laughs> like you because <laughs> you're mouthy i mean i actually have a nickname of mouth from the south because i'm originally from essex so yeah. like i wonder where we get that from <laughs> that's a lovely name <laughs> Oh dear, so I suppose if I was going to pull up on, yeah, any the harshest, I suppose it could be a lot worse, I guess, you know. Um, oh, yeah. But you're not spiteful, uh, you're not mean, you're just loud. Loud. That's fine. Just really mouthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, not that it's like I'm trying to live up to like the Essex persona, the, you know, stereotype, mouthy, blonde Essex girl. <laughs> Mind you, you you know, for any of the any any viewers currently not from the UK, it's such yes. a small island, but there are such distinct and often quite harsh stereotypes about every little like twenty miles. It's 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 crazy how uh, like, we we can be a very we can be a very harsh nation to our to our neighbours and our neighbours within the UK. We're not even talking outside of yes. this island. And do you know what I find as well? Like you know, it is. It's funny because. For such a small island as well, the different accents and stuff like that we have, it's so varied. It's it's madness. Like um it really is. especially like if you go to the north northwest, say Manchester versus Liverpool, in you know, and there's just basically an IKEA in between them. <laughs> it's insane, it's absolute craziness. I think, yeah. Like um I was saying it me and my husband were joking, my husband's from Birmingham. Um, mm-hmm. So the Midlands, and then there's obviously me from the South in Essex, and yeah. the two worst apparently accents that there are in ranking. Essex is number one, and Brummy is number two. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, our kids are going." Well, stick. I have to congratulate Essex there because they've risen in the rankings. Because for a long time, Birmingham was the most unpopular accent, so you've usurped Birmingham from the top spot. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, it's the accolade you never wanted. Well, well, wait, 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 there you go. <laughs> oh dear <laughs> great um be loud and be authentic in your own accent yeah, that's someone it. that's, that's uh, completely lost their mancunian accent so i'll, uh, I'll get stick from my mum for saying that oh really you are a mm. oh, good mancunian blimey yeah i mind it very well don't i yeah. <laughs> drinks maybe not so much <laughs> you got me dead on there yeah. <laughs> oh dear um, Jackie, what's the biggest leadership challenge you're faced with today? Oh, do you know what? I think it's probably time and sort of juggling act at the moment. And even more so with us now, like a lot of us working remotely. You know, I think there are three things that sort of I can think of. I think like um, giving the business what they need and want from me as a leader, Mm -hmm. one thing. Then supporting my team and being a strong leader for my team, giving them the tools that they need as a team to then, you know, deliver and do the best that they can 
you know, in their jobs. And then it is this whole remotely how you keep that rapport and that relationship strong, not just between me and my colleagues, but also mm -hmm. with the re you know the wider team as well. And I think um, as a leader, it's it's a huge juggling act. Like, and then you've got to throw on for me, like you know. I'm just as much as a leader um, for my kids as I am for my work yeah. colleagues. So it's sort of a real massive juggling act of sort of um, making sure that I'm giving, devoting enough time, you know, of my working day to sort of doing things strategically that I need to for the bees for the business, mm -hmm. but then also working within my individual team members to make sure that they're getting, you know, the knowledge and the support that they need. Um, Cause I'm a real believer in, you know, a knowledge share and making sure that my team have everything at their fingertips and that they are the mini leaders of my team. I think it's, you know, they all have skill sets and, and, and they all have, they're all good at things. I'll have elements that they are good at that I'm not so good at. And that's sure. why they're in my team because they they add to what I don't have. So, you know, trying to make sure that we bring that out and I'm giving them that um, everything they need to sort of really sort of, you know, do the best that they can do and develop as in their career as well. Mm. Um, and it's tough, you know, like it's, you know, days are short, meetings are long. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that it's I think you know and that's only heightened you know over the last four or five months as I'm trying to you know because now you know before I was going from meeting to meeting I come back and at least I come back and I come to the team and mm. I can pick up on the vibes of the room you know you can pick up on the vibe of the team you can Definitely. tell if there's something not right or there's some stress or there's tension or whatever and then now being remote it's really tricky picking up on that over over sort of a screen or an email or a message so I think you know it's trying to make sure um that I am being and they see me as a good leader and they're feeling supported I think that is sort of the the hardest thing it's the thing that sort of um yeah been a big learning curve for me on sort of you've I've had to really adapt my style of how I'm leading teams and um yeah. I'm working with my colleagues so I think I think it's 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 been tough I've, it's it's been enjoyable like really you know we've yeah obviously m and Direct over the last five six months have had have been incredible we've had an incredible you know four or five months during the lockdown there is mm -hmm. a huge opportunity for us um so it, you know it's really important that I am a great leader for the team because otherwise it could really all go wrong <laughs> 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 so um yeah i think that's probably for me the the, the most difficult um ch or challenging most challenging part of being a leader at the moment um but it's all about staying in contact continuously like you know and i think picking up picking up the phone you know using your zooms and all of that is very very important but mm possible we I do try and sort of at the moment you know we are meeting sort of um once every couple of weeks because Great. just to get face to face in I don't want to do one to ones and team updates over a screen because it's not it's not the same as being you know one to ones for me are in a, a tight you know a, it's a small part of a working you know their working week or working month where my team have my sole focus attention is about them yeah and I, I, I want to be there i want to be present not you know just you know in a room on a screen you know i don't feel people open up perhaps as much so for me um it's made that that's vital for us is to we, we still try and get together as much as we can that's great you're able to do that in restrictions and all of that but you know, it's um, it's it's tough. It's tough at the moment. I think. Um, do you know what do you think? Like, you agree? Like, have you found it difficult as well? Like, what? Totally. Um, we've been quite fortunate. Um, again, managing to, to to follow guidelines, but still get some face time. Although my direct line manager is based in Paris, and I've never met him, and we get on really well. And um, but we we um, that that's just the kind of the, the nature of our of our big international business. But yeah, I mean. When it was when the government in the UK was were 
encouraging people to go back into the offices in sort of August and September. We were able to because um, there were only kind of a handful of us that were able to commute in, so we could see each other on a um, quite regular basis. And it it just it's the conversations that don't warrant a phone call or you wouldn't think warrant a phone call but actually you can resolve something before it's ever an issue before there are so many times so I so I work in marketing and so I work really closely with the inside sales team and often they'll query a lead that's coming through marketing and they'll be saying oh what's this why is this and they'll ask each other and I'm, I'm sat there on the other side of the room within earshot and I just go I can answer this question, but they wouldn't necessarily have thought to have thought to ask me or to reach out or can we jump on a quick video call or send a message and not I might not see my messages straight away. But when you're there, when you're present and when you're listening to it, it's the stuff that you pick up on. You you can you can sort things and you can resolve things and you can you achieve things. I think a lot a lot easier sometimes. Oh, face face. oh I do as well. Do you know what? It's amazing how people can read different ways. People can read a sentence, it's just a sentence. Totally. Just maybe three words. <laughs> Doesn't and it's madness. It's like you know, and it it's. I feel like that is some. You know, when you've got a team, I've got a team. Big personalities in my team. You know, we're all. You know, we're all big personalities. Different <laughs> personalities, and I think. You know, there have been, and, the, and, our, and you know, the role, you know, our team can get very busy, very stressful. Um, and it could take just one, one sentence from one person. And it just, it, it could just blow up and you just think it could have all been avoided if we were just in the office. And, you know, and I think this is why for peak season, I'm like, we, we, it is a, we need to be in the same room because, yeah. you know, it, it's some things can be quickly resolved and sort of decided. And like you say, um, people just listening for each other, you know, Oh, actually I can ask them that question. Um, and sort of, you know, it, uh, yeah, you're, yeah. It's sorted it. in seconds. Mm. Also, I think we're, we're really complex social creatures. Um, and what you say about email, the, the, like, written language is a fantastic thing, but it's also, it, it loses the nuance that body language and tone and yeah. intent it, it's so difficult to, to, to read that and I think that's often where something that seems really innocuous and just a normal request to someone can come off across as so abrasive or rude or passive aggressive yeah. and and it, it's, it's an absolute minefield because we are such complex creatures with you know a, a whole range of emotions um, oh, absolutely. By which the must be a real time. management issue yeah I mean the amount of times that you know I've and I you think to yourself you know, they might, when I'm in the office, I'm running to and from meetings and someone might go, um, oh, can you just tell me this? And I'll go, yep, yeah, blah, 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 right, gotta go. And then I run to the next meeting. If I was to do on a message, like it would just look really rushed. Like I've just literally been really stern and sharp with someone. It's nice because I'm going, oh, cancel. You're just actually out the door, <laughs> yeah. Now going into another meeting. <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah, it's, I suppose it's tough, it's tough at the moment. And I think, yeah, for a lot of teams, I'm sure a lot of people out there are, Sort of experiencing the same sort of things and communication I guess like making sure you're getting those face-to-faces in I suppose yeah where you can maybe jump on like a video call at this at least you can see someone's face and yeah. stuff and you can have you know that open conversation wherever possible I use more emojis internally than like just because it's like I'm saying this nice thing. look how, look how smiling my face is you can't see my face or um I have on occasion just sent a selfie of my actual face <laughs> It's like this is what it looks like. Yeah. Um, anything we do to get that personal interaction. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> My next question for you. Uh, uh -huh. What are your hopes for your industry? Hopes for my industry. Well, I guess that we come out the other side of um this pandemic um in a much stronger place. Um it's been it's been tough <laughs> it's yeah. been so hard um and i think i hope that as an industry we move forward you know we've all had to adapt um be very agile and i think i hope that as an industry we have sort of learned that that is key in being as a business as businesses teams you mm. know people um being agile being able to switch things up and change things um i hope that sort of going forwards that's sort of the just going to be the norm now that we are constant i think we'll become more vigilant like keeping our eye out for stuff like this but we're trying to pick things off 
before they mm. become um, and trying to make the most of them, I suppose. Um, I guess, yeah, I think there's been a lot of lessons, I think, you know, and even just in general, like, let's just hope people, businesses, things are, are kinder, <laughs> nicer. Um, you know, I think, um, yeah, on a personal note, I guess I just want to move my team forward and, you know, um, there's some really exciting things I think uh to come on the horizon I think hopefully we you know and all those other businesses out there can cling on and you know those that are struggling um are sort of sort of make it through mm. um take big learnings try and look at try and take this as a, a chance to learn from how they you know need to change as a business in order to sort of be able to sort of survived something like this may not be you know obviously not another pandemic but do you know what I mean like they've taken sort of learnings on how they might need to change their teams and the yeah. way they do things um that will help them sort of in future and then for for businesses like us that you know M&M who have you know just done so well um in you know in this situation that we don't waste the opportunity um and that we make the very most of it um so I guess yeah my hopes for the industry is that I hope you know it's a shame really we're losing you know a lot of great you know businesses a lot of great retailers out there um and yeah. it's it's a shame it's such a shame and I look at the high street and I know it's obviously it's an e-commerce uh, business you know we don't have those worries and you know yeah. you think, oh, it's great, but it's you know there's local businesses and stuff like that you know yeah. those I hope that as as many of those as possible make it through because um, you know they are vital. I think, and um, I really hope that you know um, people are supporting them as well as buying great deals at low prices on M and M Direct. I also hope nice that <laughs> they are also where they can shopping locally and supporting their local businesses and and helping them out Especially because it's kind of yeah this time when they really really need us and um you know they they offer so much to us as a consumer um and i hope yeah i think that's my hopes that people are going to be more thoughtful in this you know with this industry and how they they shop and how they consume and um yeah i think that's my hopes really what about you what do you think like um yeah I, it, it's the recovery. I think I really do agree with you on that. Um, I've been trying to think really carefully about where I shop. Yeah. Um, and you know, because it's like okay, especially I'm, I'm really lucky. So I, I live in I live in London. Um, the rest of the hospitality industry is is taking such a massive hit, and obviously the ten o'clock rule that we have it, it is really impacting them as well, and have, especially having to shut for so long. Um, so I'm really like if there's a favorite restaurant or a shop or anything like that I'm I'm trying to suspend quite conscientiously obviously like I'm not there chucking money left right and center yeah. but I really am like okay these, like this company is amazing I love what they stand for um, the service you know especially if it's a restaurant okay the the serving staff are incredible the the food's amazing the chefs are like just the whole thing I generally think I want this company to stay in business so one mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to put my money there rather than you know a, a chain or something that, that, that doesn't appeal to me in the same way and not, not that there's anything bad with chains but you know there's not you're, you're not like, you're not saying certain... that you're never gonna shop at you know get your coffee from your preferred brand of you know coffee or whatever mm. but you know we i think it is it's those small changes that we're making that make a big difference i guess like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely um because there is a certain element of like and also i try and tell my friends about them as well is that we have such a power as a collective um and yeah. things like, so, you know social media gets such a bad rap and I don't know if you've watched the social dilemma on netflix at the moment mm -hmm. oh, uh, um the i know but there is some power in it so if i go somewhere and i post it and i tag it and whatever that, that you know that social power that that means that someone else might go to somewhere that i think is fantastic and, and i really hope does survive this really difficult year that that the hospitality industry or, or the retail industry has been having um i'm going to shout about it because yeah there is there is power in social yeah no there are oh, absolutely like and um it is like yeah like we say social it does get quite a bad rap and it's not always great but from for, for those local businesses and those recommendations and stuff like that yeah i do i think it's so important that we're shouting about those you know those experiences that we're having 
yeah sort of in these smaller businesses and that um yeah mm. one weird fact about you please uh this right this question i thought about it for ages <laughs> It's like the hardest question. And I think this is like, we we as humans hate, like when someone's like, oh, I've got to think about me and a weird fact. What is weird about me? Like, it's been <laughs> ages and then I just thought, what can I talk about? And the only weird thing I can think of is um, I once dressed up as a seagull for a sea-themed barn dance. Spectacular. That's the thing. Right, so I'm quite big anyway on fancy dress. I'm one of these Great. people who try to go home. You know, don't yeah. turn them up to a fancy totally dress party. Great. The theme is clear. So don't cut. Like if it's, I don't know, you get these people who try to look cool when they're fancy dress. That's not the point of a fancy dress party. You're meant to look ridiculous. So don't be coming with like, I don't know, what's some of like a heroes and or prince and princesses and just come with like a house. Like, no, you've got to go all out. Like I've been dressed, I've dressed up as a Noompa Loompa, orange, green hair. I love that. Like, but yeah, this, I feel like the seagull, me and my friend, she actually stitched me up a little bit. She was like, do you want to come to this party? It's like sea themes, birthday, it'd be great. I was like, yeah, awesome. Listen, we went to the fancy dress shop. Honestly, <laughs> We walked in, we were like, we need something. It was for the week, like the next day. We need something mm. seen themed. Um, she was like, oh, mermaid? We were like, oh, no, it's a mermaid. There's going to be loads of mermaids there. What else yeah. you got? She was like, my friend went as a codfish. There was like a full blown, you know, like one of those big suits, a little hole for a face. Codfish. Yeah. Incredible. And, yeah. And then a big, like, fluffy seagull outfit, which I went in. We turned up, pulled up at the car park. My friend was like, oh, I forgot. It's a barn dance. And I was like. You've got to be able to dance. I was like, who has a sea-themed barn dance? Who has a sea? That's the weirdest thing ever. She's in like, a, she can barely move. I've actually got pictures of us trying to get up a in the car. Like she was squished in. Um, and we turned up. <clears throat> and we're pretty much the only ones that dressed up. <laughs> it was like one of those comedy moments you know when you like burst through the doors and then it's like oh we're like this and you've got like your sexy mermaid you're like <laughs> yeah oh, wow. the cool dude in his like speedos <laughs> with his rippling six pack and then there's a cod and a sea fish uh, at a sea cod and a seagull so yeah I suppose I mean it goes, it, it goes back to the big personality thing. I just think lean in, carry on, crack on. This is brilliant. Um, I'm, such, I'm really, I'm quite quiet and <laughs> character, don't you know? <laughs> Incredible, don't ever change. Always be a seagull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, amongst a load of mermaids, be a seagull. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, never, never be basic. Never be predictable. Never be a mermaid. That's it. Always push the boundaries. Never that life lesson there. Yeah. Um, I've got one final question for you. Yeah. What is your favourite food and your place to and your favourite place to have it? My favourite food. I'm sorry, but I'm going to go traditional. If I had to pick one last meal to eat, it'd be a roast dinner through and through. Cut it. What meat are we talking? I'm talking, I think I would have to go chicken. I am a, I do like a nice roast chicken dinner. Um, I'm a real meat and two veg kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a salad. <laughs> and um, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, obviously, each to their own. But I am very much, I like, you know, proper roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings, thick gravy. Like I love veg as well. I'm a big veg fan. So like I love broccoli, mm. my favourite vegetable. Okay. <laughs> um where would I have it? it? Would be at home with my family. Honestly would you I'm be cooking or would your husband be cooking? I'm the oh, well I look I am the cook. My husband can cook. We are, you know, he's he needs a good cook, but anything like that like I'm generally sort of the cook and I really enjoy it I love cooking I really when I've got the time as well to properly sort of put some time aside like Christmas this year I cannot wait I'm so oh, excited yes. like, I love doing and I you know fingers crossed we can have some of the family over um 
I love that. I love entertaining. But um, yeah, that's it. I, you know, keep it simple. Me, traditional, nice roast dinner with the family. Perfect. Perfect. That's my ideal. <laughs> what about you? Um, I know it's such a classic English answer, but it would probably be curry. Um, oh, yeah. There's a very specific three curries in very specific plates. So since I was 18, we, my family have gone to the same Pakistani restaurant uh, yeah. for most family celebrations. Yeah. So it's like yeah. maybe it's before my 18th birthday. This must be a thing because I have an Indian where every Friday night, me and my family would go to this one Indian restaurant for an it's, 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 um, it's a, it's a for any non non Brits watching, yeah. It's a, the, the 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 way that we've taken Indian cuisine, um, ruined it a little bit, it. made it <laughs> trashed it, ruined it, just made it exactly what they want. This is not traditional English food. This is not traditional <laughs> Pakistani food. This is the food that Indian and Pakistani people make for English people. Um, yeah. I'm 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 chicken sorry. Chicken masala. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but this particular place, and it's fantastic. We've been, so we've been going there. We don't go there every week. So it's right in the middle of Manchester, um, a place called Akbar's. And um, but we we've been there. Yes, yeah, since I was eighteen. Went there for my eighteenth birthday, for my dad's sixtieth birthday, for my sister's twenty first birthday. The, all of those. Um, and we've got we've got a system now. So me, my sister, and my sister's boyfriend. This is all basic. My sister's boyfriend will eat anything we tell him to, as long as he gets the the naan bread. The the, the single naan, not the family naan, comes on a hook. And is I'm gonna lose my laptop. It's like it's bigger than the screen. I can't. It's this big, um, and it comes on a hook. The family nan comes on two hooks, um, which is great. So Jamie's just excited about quantity. Mum and dad get the things that they normally get, and then my sister and I force her boyfriend to order the seafood balti, the uh, lamb karahi. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, and the garlic chili chicken. And that is what we want. And we'll have um, each of us like one slightly more than the other. So we each get a bit more of our favourite. And we want naan and we want rice and we're at bars. And the staff are incredible. There seems to be so many staff that, I, that, that move so quickly. I presume there's a one way system um, around the thing. It's fantastic. Um, I love oh, that. Place. Amazing. At I bars love, on Liverpool I Street. Yeah, I do. I do love because I think I've got a feeling. I think they've got, they've got, is there an at bars in Birmingham as well? Is there it, is. is there? Yeah, and I've there's been one to the, in Rotherham and one in Newcastle as well. Yeah, so I've been to the Act Bars in Birmingham and it is great. It is great, but like um, yeah, like we 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 had like a we've got like a um a curry house um in down south in it and literally I'm not joking. It would be I used to be a girl guide and I used to go to, <laughs> I used to go to girl guides on Friday night with my friend and then we used Aww. to walk through guides <laughs> to this Indian restaurant on Friday night to meet my dad. And his wife, my stepmom, and we used to have dinner, Friday dinner there. Literally, even now, like, and it's so funny. Like, we go there, and sort of there are like he always says, "Oh, he was meeting the new generation," because literally, like, it was me, and then my dad would take my brothers and me there, and then it would be my me, my brothers, and then my children, and oh. the same Luna has been there for like this whole time. We're just like little regulars. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> I think this might be the record for the longest and waffliest um, beyond the title because I've just chatted rubbish at you and um, and you've been amazing. Thank you for all your answers. They've been really thoughtful. I'm really open. Um, thank you so much for taking part in beyond the title, Jackie. Thank you um, for having me. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry I've waffled um, on so long. No, no, no. no I'm, I'm, I'm the waffler. You've been, you've been brilliant. Um, but it's been fantastic. I've really loved talking to you. Thank um, you. Uh, so thank you, Jackie. That was Jackie thank Barnett, the uh, CRM dumb, uh, CRM manager for uh, Beyond the Title. And we'll be back same time next week. Thank you very much. Goodbye.